let me give you a, a quick agenda on kind of what we're going to do. So I will um, play a quick video that kind of talks about who Art Storefronts is, what we do, explain the product. You can kind of think of it as like a quick demo. Uh, as soon as that's done, I'll come back on and rant for a little bit. And then we get into the best part of this, which is the Q&A, um, where you are in your business, uh, what's preventing you from taking the next step, uh, how is it going, uh, all of these various different things. And so excited to discuss all of that. Um, so I'll see you guys just right on the other side, and uh, we get into the Q&A after that. Um, so go ahead and take it away, Taylor. All right, everybody, welcome to today's session. My name's Taylor. I'm on the marketing team at Art Storefronts. One of the people putting together our many resources and consulting and mentoring our members on a regular basis in workshops like these. Today's session is for non-members, so this is a free, wide open session, and how it's a little bit different than what you get as a member. Our member workshops, which we hold five times a week at this point on various topics, are largely tactical, right? So it's giving uh, our members ongoing advice, tweaks to their strategy, checking in with them, seeing how far they've gotten since we last spoke, and uh, making sure their business is always growing. By contrast, today will be largely about what we call unclogging the drain. Before you're even ready for tactical or strategic advice, you need to get the big thing out of the way. And we found through these non-member workshops that uh, most artists and photographers out there have something. They have a big thing in their way. It can be a mindset problem, some kind of self-limiting belief that if you just simply do away with it, the path becomes clear. Or it could be something more practical like uh, not, not doing something Thing that you really need to be doing. Whatever it is, we're gonna find out about it today and fix it for you. Before we get into all that good stuff, I have two segments for you up top here, opening remarks. The first one, stuff you need to know about this workshop, how it works. The second, a little bit of an overview on art storefronts, uh, just to get some context, set the stage, you know, who we are and what we do. First up, the need to know information about today's workshop. To get in line to chat with us, right? To, to get unmuted and start to uh, get some help, you need to use the raise hand button in Zoom. So at the bottom of your Zoom window, you'll see the participants button. You're gonna hit that and that'll open this on the right hand side where you'll find the blue raise hand button. You hit that and that will do it, raise hand. You'll see up here, your name will show the, the blue raise hand. Button. That's the system we use. We go top to bottom, uh, unmuting everyone that has their hand raised and uh, helping them out. So if you have a question up front, you know you want to talk to us, you can do that right now and get early in line so you'll be one of the first people to get some help today. If something comes up later and you, you don't have a question yet but something comes to mind, you can always do it later in the session too. The second thing you need to know is that we have a page that we call the show notes. And that's where we aggregate all of the links to resources that come up today. So if uh, one of us says we have a really good video about that, or we say we actually have a podcast episode that would help you out, you don't need to be hunting around for that in the moment. We're doing that for you. We're collecting it all. Here's what the page looks like. We're gonna send this to you after today's session ends. We're gonna email it to you. So you'll find the replay at the top. Right? So if you have to leave early or you arrived late, uh, or even if you missed it all together, uh, you can always catch up with the replay here. And then this is the show notes section I was talking about. All the links will be there, everything that came up. So you'll have that. Don't worry about looking anything up in the moment. We're taking care of it. Uh, I should also mention on this page while you're here, there are a couple of request a demo buttons. Those are your go-to spots for either signing up if you just want to get going or reaching out to us, having a more in-depth chat about our features and our pricing and stuff like that. That's how you start those conversations. If you just want to do your research and uh, get to know us, see if there's a good fit, you hit the request the demo button, you fill out the form and we'll get in touch. That's how you do that. Okay, second segment today, uh, what even is Art Storefronts, okay? So here is the very quick overview. And like I said, the demo is where they go in depth. They'll do an hour for you. They'll answer as many questions as you have. But today, I don't know how many people here already know everything about us, nothing about us. So I'll just go right down the middle and do a very quick overview. Um, there are two halves to Art Storefronts. There is the website software, right? So that is the art selling website. And then there's the marketing program, and that is really the fuel for that website engine. The, the website could be fantastic. We believe it's the best website software for artists ever designed. We really believe that, and I'll show you why in a moment. However, 
all of the power of that website is meaningless if there's no one on it. So the marketing program is what completes the whole membership. Uh, I'll show you both halves now, starting with the website. There are hundreds of features, hundreds of features. It is very difficult to give you a full overview of everything that's going on with this software. So I think I will just show you uh, what's really most important, right? The product page. At the end of the day, everything on your website is designed around getting people here to the product page where then they can check out and buy your artwork. So what is the big deal with these product pages? Um, to explain that, let's just clarify that I'm showing you an artwork product page today. That's the important one. We also have what we call standard product pages, and that's where you can sell anything. If you have ceramics, jewelry, uh, clothing, you can sell all of those product types on art storefronts. It does not need to be solely wall art. But I wanna show you the wall art product page because there's an important thing to uh, get straight here. These pages are set up specifically to sell wall art. That's that's in contrast to a website provider like Squarespace that has to have their product pages work for all product types, whether you're selling artwork or toilet paper or electric scooters, right? It works for everything, which creates a master of none situation when it comes to their features. They have not considered artwork in particular, so they have not addressed the problems, the challenges with selling artwork online like we have. The big deal with selling artwork online is that there is a lot of friction. It is not a product like toilet paper or electric scooters where you want what it does and you find the one that you like and you buy it. Uh, it's a little more complicated than that. Buying art is an emotional journey. You fall in love with the work. You get to know the artist through their emails and their social media posts. You save up for it. Uh, eventually you get the wall space open, but even then you have questions like how, which piece should I select and how is it going to look with my uh, wall paint color? How is it going to work with the other uh, pieces of artwork in my collection? Will my spouse like it? How do I show it to them in the best way? Um, what are the media types available? I've never heard of this word acrylic. Is that worth looking into? Uh, what size is going to work for my space? I don't want it to look too small or of course too big. Uh, all of these questions are where you lose sales. People have those questions. Your website does not answer them and they never get it answered. They leave. Uh, you cannot rely on people reaching out to you actively to ask these questions right? Your website needs to passively answer them for you all the time. Whenever that question comes up, whichever one it is, your website comes in and says, oh, here you go. Got the help for you right here. Problem solved. Keep going. Keep making the purchase, right? That is what maximizes art sales. Let's start by just looking at the layout of the page. Image on the left, buying options on the right. Not below, not somewhere down the page you need to scroll to find. Everything is uh, visible on one screen and it's all expanded. There's not drop downs. Everything is image based. This is like the express lane to checking out artwork online. Beyond that, you can offer every version of an image side by side. The open edition prints are right here. With one click, you can start shopping the limited edition prints, signed and numbered, highest quality, that sort of thing. With another click, you're over to the original version of that image. If the original is available, uh, you could step up and buy it right here. Finally, the multi-panel. This is where you break up a single image into three prints, right? So it's a huge upsell. You turn one print sale into three, very sleek and modern presentation. I love that one. If you don't offer one of these media types, like you're a photographer, so you don't have originals, uh, you wouldn't have this tab on your website. This is just showing all the possible options, but you'll set it up to whatever you actually offer. So if you don't have limited editions, it's gone. It's not on your actual site. Uh, it adapts to what you actually sell. Within these, let's look at the open edition prints. Now, the big challenge there is explaining the media types. The average art consumer does not know terms like uh, canvas gallery wrap, G-clay print, uh, metal, acrylic. They don't know what these look like. They don't know what they are. So it becomes difficult to make a smart decision um, until they do. So the website's job is to educate them very quickly and visually. So here's how we've done that. When you click on one of the media types, the uh, preview over on the left-hand side uh, adapts in a subtle way. So this adds a little bit of virtual depth to this image because we selected the canvas option. That clues people in, oh, this is that traditional thick gallery look. Beyond that, maybe they don't know what metal is, uh, you can hover on these tool tips here, the little question marks, and then you can launch a video. These are custom videos we've produced just for our members that show every angle of these media types and summarize the benefits. They're about 15 seconds long and they instantly create that connection of, oh, that is what I want. Very powerful. Um, 
Beyond those buying tools, you have the visualization tools. This is for questions like, uh, I love the piece, I know I want it on metal, I'm just not sure if it's really gonna look good in my space or uh, how large I should buy. That's where the visualization tools come in. Wall preview is the, uh, the starter there. Uh, you can select a room type and you can get going very quickly, a good representation of uh, what size you need. All right, so let's step it up, the 30, that looks good. The 32 looks even better, right? You're stepping it in. We've got wall color here. These aren't random. These are the top selling uh, paint colors from last year from Benjamin Moore, Sherwin Williams. So there's a high likelihood your buyers will actually find their real wall color right in here. Very simple, very fast. Uh, so this helps clear up some of those questions, but we take it to the next level with live room preview. You can see the button here and also on the product page right here, live preview AR. This is an augmented reality tool that allows people to use their mobile or tablet device to uh, visualize the artwork on their actual wall, not a virtual space, not a hypothetical wall, their actual wall space. So you can see in this video here, it projects it onto their wall. They can start to select the sizing and see how everything looks. They can move it around the wall space. And now there is no translation problem, right? It is not close to their wall color or whatever. It is their real actual space. The most powerful part of this feature, because other websites have this type of functionality via an app. Ours works in the web browser. There is no downloading and installing an app. They're right in the checkout process. They pop open this tool. It works on their phone. They close the tool once they're happy and they continue checking out. That is the game changing part of it. So overall, I think that does a good job of summarizing uh, a few of the features of the product page here, but that is your, your drop in the bucket overview. It goes on and on. Art Buyer AI recognizes and informs you when a likely collector has visited your site. Uh, we have tools that allow you to fire off very quick emails to welcome personally new subscribers, to uh, reach out when someone has added something to their cart but not checked out, right? Give you a shot to close that sale. The features really go on and on QR codes, selling sheets. Um, I couldn't possibly summarize it today. Request a demo if you want to see a little bit more. Um, but that is the engine, the, the Ferrari in your driveway. Let's talk about the fuel that goes in it, the marketing program. Uh, of course, when it comes to artists, you guys do not want to be marketing. I understand that completely. You want to be creating the work and selling it. That's it. But the in-between step is very necessary and it is marketing. So let's talk about how we make that process as painless as possible while still getting you uh, doing the work that you must do to grow a small business. The centerpiece to our marketing program, where it all comes back to, is the art marketing calendar. That is the core piece. Everything else just supports this. The marketing calendar is a daily plan that tells you exactly what to do every single day of the year. It provides you with all the email language you'll need to pull off sales, a Black Friday sale, something like that. And it gives you the advice that you need to turn your casual followers into leads. That's people on your email list. Your leads into first time buyers and your buyers into lifelong repeat collectors. We walk you through it on a daily Daily basis. It is not overwhelming. It is not a knowledge base where you need to watch 55 videos and then just implement what they said. All you need to do is look at today. Uh, we're on Wednesday. What do they say to do? I have three tasks to complete. It should take me about 30 minutes. Let's do it. Three tasks. One, two, three, knocked it out. You have done what you need to do for your business today. It's that simple. Let's look at what this thing is. So uh, up top, attention newbies. This is a section with four steps we want our new members to complete before they get down to the full calendar. Uh, some highlights here, we have a workshop every Wednesday where our marketing team will look at your new Art Storefronts website, go through the major pages, and make sure that it's set up according to best practices from a marketing point of view, right? So before you even launch, you make sure you're gonna be closing every possible sale. Uh, we also have a campaign, a 14-day campaign that we want all new members to execute. It's, it's just like the calendar. It tells you what to do day by day. Post this message on Facebook and post this message on Instagram and send this email. Very simple to follow. And that uh, campaign is themed around celebrating your new website in a way that will generate you some leads and maybe some sales to right up top. So we ask everyone to do that before getting into the calendar with everyone else. Below the newbie section, we have the live workshop schedule that has uh, your look at what's coming up this week when you can join us in Zoom in our members only workshops. 
We have some announcements that go here. We have a strategic overview, step three. This section is written by our CEO and our director of marketing. And in it, they give you their advice, what they would do if they were running your business this month, where your head should be at, right? So the, the calendar below is your daily bit by bit look. This section is the high level overview, what you should be thinking about your major goals for the month. And then you have the calendar itself. You can see it's day by day. Um, we have a bit of hierarchy here where we put the most important tasks in red and everything else in black. Nothing goes on here that's not important to do, right? So the black tasks are not unimportant. It's just that if you have very limited time, uh, you have family obligations, a part or full-time job, and you can't get to the entire calendar, no problem, uh, do the red stuff first. And then if you have extra time, do the black tasks. Uh, most people have no problem completing 75% uh, or more of the calendar though. It's not a huge obligation because we do so much of the work upfront for you in terms of writing the subject lines you should be sending and giving you lots of examples whenever anything uh, needs to be created. Uh, it's day by day. You've got the major task of the day, and then you've got go to tasks, a button that jumps you down the page to the full explanation of the day. It'll give you an objective for the day and then break down uh, what you need to be doing into tasks. One, two, three, do these things very easy to follow. Um, everything else, like I said, supports this system. So our workshops in general are supporting our members as they're following this calendar. Uh, you check in with us, you say, I did the Saturday Sunday task and I got these results. What can I do to boost them even further? Or uh, I see next week I need to be doing this, but I don't have my head around it fully yet. Can you uh, talk to me a little bit more about it? All that sort of stuff. We make sure our members are moving together through the calendar all at the same time. When we do some Something new, right? So we've recently started doing these live art shows. We have a playbook on how to execute a live art show from home. And our members are having some huge successes with this, selling dozens of pieces from home on Instagram or Facebook Live. Um, that is an example of something where after everyone does this together, we have hundreds, maybe even a thousand people running these live shows simultaneously. Then the following week, we have uh, six or seven or eight of the people that had the most success with that strategy come on a live workshop for our members and just talk through what they did. We hear out, how did they address it specifically? Was there anything that was a little different than anyone else? How did they see that success? Um, that way, all of the members can hear what's working from the other members, and then we go ahead and update all of our playbooks with the new learnings. So there is nothing in this program that is static, that is a dead uh, blog post style article from six years ago that may or may not be relevant today. We are updating these things on a weekly basis, checking in with our members. Uh, if enough people report that this part didn't work for them, it didn't really seem to do anything, it gets pulled out, right? We are live adjusting all of our resources so that when you join in, you get the learnings of the past several years just baked into everything. So I've talked a lot about how our members interact with us, get mentorship and consulting from us via the workshops, but we also have a venue for them to get help from each other when they need to talk shop or just get input from a whole bunch of artists really quick on a topic like, you know, how do you address shipping? How do you go about uh, tax, some kind of tax situation? All that sort of stuff. The Small Wins Facebook group is the place for that. It's private just for our members, and that is where they go to ask for help, share their, their small wins as we call it, you know, all the little success successes that stack up into a successful business. Uh, does anyone know how to patent or copyright a design? Get some help from our members on that. So this is the place to go uh, when you need to uh, quickly pull a huge group of people uh, that, that have gotten further than you, right? That already have gotten where you wanna go uh, and have the learnings, the quick learnings that they can summarize for you. Between all of these resources that all fall back on the calendar, you have a marketing system that keeps you in line, that keeps you moving, that does not simply present you with 1,000 hours of content and asks you to explore it at your own pace, figure out for yourself which things you should be following and which things you should ignore. Uh, uh -uh. This is about the calendar. It's about uh, cutting out all the time you waste thinking about what you should and shouldn't be doing. That is the time saver uh, here, the big game changer. You no longer need to think about all the possible things. We've already done that. We've highlighted what you should be doing. The best return on your time. All right, that is my uh, rant. I was, I was gonna say short rant. I know it wasn't short, but it's very difficult to compress everything we have going on into uh, a format like this. So thanks for listening. Uh, again, the website is your engine.
the marketing program is the fuel for that engine. Uh, so with that said, let's get into the consulting. Uh, I think we're all on the same page now, so let's do that drain unclogging I talked about in the beginning. Uh, I'll turn it over to our hosts. All right, thank you, pre-recorded Taylor. Um, so I can see some of you guys have hands raised already. That's great. Some of you guys have questions in the chat. Wonderful. Um, I'll get into those in just a second. I would say, big picture, you know, I see some familiar faces on this call that have heard, heard me say some of this, but there's a lot of you guys are new, so I'll, I'll, I'll just say this briefly. Um, everyone thinks we're a website company at the end of the day. We are so much more than a website company. Really, what we optimize our entire business towards is empowering artists and photographers to create successful businesses, okay? And in order to do that, a website is simply not enough. Um, Shopify has this stat, I always cite it, that 99% of Shopify store owners, uh, those businesses end up failing. And it's not a knock on Shopify, which is a great company and a great product. It just speaks to the fact that, you know, many artists and photographers think the solution to selling their art and building a robust business is just one website move away and nothing could be further from the truth. All artists and photographers, pretty much 99.999% have a traffic problem. They have an attention problem, which at the root of that is just marketing. It's just marketing at the end of the day. So really, instead of just a website company, we're basically an art business university that has a piece of website software. Is the piece of website software robust, the best in industry, the best in class? Yes, it is. It's not braggadocio for me to say that. We don't really have a direct competitor that is completely optimized to sell in wall art. Um, we just don't, or art period, really. But really, our secret sauce is in the continued marketing education that you get week in, week out, 52 weeks a year. And how do we provide that education? I would say... You know, before COVID hit, a couple of weeks before COVID hit, we were largely, you know, a digital education firm. We had amazing blog posts and an amazing podcast, and we had these things called playbooks, which are step-by-step -step guides on how to how to run a sale, how to run ads on Facebook, how to do a live art show, and that was working pretty well for us. And then we realized, you know, a little bit before COVID, that we need to start doing Zoom sessions like this with our customers, and so we started putting all of our customers on a bi-weekly basis that can make it into Zoom calls where we teach the latest and greatest marketing thing, we talk about what we want them to be doing, uh, and then we answer their questions live. What started out as two sessions a week has since morphed into, I mean, I think if I look at the calendar, we have 12 different sessions going on this week, um, Zoom calls that our customers are jumping into with everything from tech support to marketing support, marketing questions, uh, and not just with our software, with Facebook and Instagram and YouTube and MailChimp and how to run email campaigns. We have sessions for when you just get started, onboarding sessions, uh, uh, getting your website audited, various things like that. And then we have the hardcore marketing sessions. And all in, we realize that, that our business, as a digital business, we've essentially opened a retail store. The retail store is not located somewhere physically, it's located on the internet. And we are, we are rapidly marching to a, to a situation where art storefronts is gonna be open via live video, via Zoom sessions just like this, from 9 a.m. to 5 a.m., six days a week. You come in at any point in time, what is your issue, what are you stuck on, what do you need help with, what do you need advice on? You can find the session, get those questions answered, uh, and get on with the marketing to, to really help and grow the business. And I think, underpinning that is the business model that we advocate everybody be in. And COVID is really hammered at home. The business model is DTC, direct to consumer. Direct to consumer sales, meaning you are not reliant on anyone to sell your product. You keep all the customer information, the email address, the phone number, um, the snail mail address, et cetera, such that you're able to market to those people in perpetuity going forward. That is a recipe that we believe constitutes the best business model that all artists and photographers should be on. And, you know, I think more than anything else, it's prominent now because what are we reading? Paris is locking down. London's talking about locking down again. Germany's talking about locking down again. Now, whether that comes back to the U.S. or not, uh, I certainly hope it doesn't. But if it does, the only outlet to be able to sell art and photography is going to be direct from your website. You know, none of the rest of the shows and theaters are going to come back. The galleries that are still open are not anywhere near getting back to 100% capacity. And it seems like that is going to be stay this way for quite some time. So it, it, it underscores how important it is now to 
have your own shop online, understand how to sell direct. And if you can be in that situation, it's actually one of the best times ever uh, to sell art and photography. Art and photography sales uh, uh, have exploded as has all home decor sales as a result of COVID, people not going back to work, people being at home way longer, bored enough, sick enough of their white walls to finally do something. Um, so that's been, a, I think, a really interesting time. Um, but yeah, that's what I would say. Uh, I will open it up for questions. I'll, I'll deal with the Brian's that, that popped into the chat first and then just kind of work my way down the hands. Uh, definitely encourage you to raise your hand. I've talked to literally thousands of artists and photographers and you know, I, I take probably 250 questions a week from artists and photographers. I look at over 4,500 different artists and photographers direct digital analytics. I know where their sales are coming from, what venues are working, what marketing is working, uh, how to understand if your work's been validated or not. So you know, my, my, my over, overall level of business and marketing acumen could be questionable, but the amount of data that I look at is not. It's staggering. So you know, depending on what your situation is, I've, I've definitely seen it before and I think I could definitely give you some advice. So that's what I would say. Um, Brian starts out with, if we can only afford the base site and not the upgraded one uh, with the augmented reality, all the bells and whistles, how much of a difference does this make in sales and how hard or easy is it to upgrade to the bigger site? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a great question. And I know, you know, just based on reps and sets that 99% of the people on this call do not have a website problem. Meaning, is our website software uh, the best out there in turning visitors and traffic into buyers? Yes, it is. Is that going to make a difference for you if you don't have any website visitors or traffic? No, it's not. No, it's not. And that's just, that's, that's the facts. You know, if you have a tremendous amount of traffic, if you've got a business that's humming already and you're on another website, then yes, you bolt into ours, you're gonna make more money. Uh, that's settled science. The conversion rates are gonna go up. The tools that we have on the back end are better. But early on, your biggest problem is not the website. Early on, your biggest problem is marketing. And so you get started, you get going on the marketing, and it's very easy to upgrade at any point in time. You can do that down the line. So that's what I would say. Um, yeah, everyone thinks they have a website problem, and that's just not it. So, okay, Patricia, you're up next. Go ahead, Patricia. You'll need to unmute yourself. I'll let you know when you have it. Yep, gotcha. Okay. Uh, where to start? I first looked at joining ASF last March, mm -hmm. April. Mm -hmm. And then COVID hit yep. hard in BC where I live, Canada. Um, so that and a number of other things going on, I put it aside. And then I started looking again in October. Mm -hmm. um, meanwhile, I went ahead on my own and set up a Facebook page okay. after exploring Shopify and Sachi and a couple others, doesn't matter. Yep. Um, and I ended up going with Faso. Okay. You know, Faso. Yep, of course. Um, I'm not really have it's too much work working with social media and building a website and very little uh, and your audio your audio Patricia is going hold on your audio is enough money to Okay, there we go. I, I'm gonna, I stopped your video um, and, and, and I just put you on audio only and that, that should oh. clear up the bandwidth issues. Go ahead, keep going. Uh-oh, I think we're losing her. Okay, is there anything I can do at this end? Y yeah, no, you're, you're, you're good. Let, yeah, let's try it now. I stopped the camera, that should fix it. Is it better? Yeah, so okay, oh, you went to Fazo, um, social media marketing, the website, too hard. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so I started back looking at your place mm -hmm. um, in October. And I did do a call, a 10 minute call. And I've, you know, I've, I've read just about every um, recording you have, you know, back in your, um, what on Facebook and, mm -hmm. and other places. Mm -hmm. Um, and I've, I've looked at the pricing and stuff. I haven't had a demo and I'd really like a demo. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't, and even, was it two days ago on, I guess at the end, a couple of days ago, 
you had a session whether on I think it was on Facebook mm -hmm. saying, you know, apply in the chat now. And I applied in the chat mm -hmm. again and I haven't heard from anyone. Um, I just would like a demo because I have a number of questions. I'm not sure. Yep. Um, Understood. If, April, will you make I a really want will you make a note to search for contact. Patricia's name in, in the database and make sure that we, we have a way to contact her and then we'll make sure somebody reaches out today, Patricia. Okay, I'd just like to get the demo because I'm not sure if, I, I mean, I'd love to go with the top. Mm -hmm. Got is most appealing price-wise, but I really, in a number of other features, I'd like to just check before. Yeah, for um, sure, for sure. On the dotted line. For sure, and I'm gonna I'm gonna mute you, Patricia. Your 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 connection is really really slow, so you're you're I'm getting like every third word. But just sit tight on the on the call for a second. April will let me know if we have your, if your correct information. Or April, just hit her up in the chat. Actually, make sure we have your correct info, and if we do, we will reach out. And the outreach guys will explain all the bells and whistles and plans and everything else. They're great at that, so we'll we'll take care of it. Okay, next up is gonna be Jonathan, and then we're gonna move on to Brian. Go ahead, Jonathan. And you'll need to unmute your mic. I'll let you know when you get it. Yep, okay, gotcha. cool. Um, great. Thanks so much. Oh, yeah, no problem. I still have my mask on. <laughs> um, so um, I did I did my validation. Woohoo! After you did? a long time of prepping. Yeah, I, I did everything you you instructed us. I, I went to Bay Photo. I got a metal, an acrylic, wood, and paper. Awesome. And and I did my validation. I did Facebook Live yesterday at three, and I did Instagram Live at six. Oh, you have no idea how happy this makes me. <laughs> I'm celebrating right now. Yeah, it took a long time for me to get the courage to do it. Yeah. Um, so, so um, it was a really positive experience. Um, you know, people weren't there weren't that many people who were on me live, but have watched since, and mm -hmm. I've gotten like thirty like things people saying this is so inspiring. I love your work. It's gorgeous. You know, you should yeah. do a book. Um, all sorts of really, really positive things, but not a single sale. One person um, said that they wanted to buy something and had some concerns. So I immediately wrote back. I mm -hmm. said, yeah, blah, blah, blah. I took care of all the concerns. I'm like, let's do this thing, you know, yeah, yeah. and to try to close it. And I haven't heard back from her and I'm going to follow up, obviously. So, um, yeah, so I, I, I'm excited to, to do the next step in my validation process if there is one. Yep. So that's my question for you. Also, I have one other question. When I was doing Facebook Live, I had the the one answer, the one question that I didn't ask before was, should I do just my like twenty five hundred friend quote unquote friends, or should I do public? So I just chose to do public Good. just because I figured that's a wider audience. Good. Um, but anyway, so that that's I'd love to know. I mean, I I I want to make at least two to three sales before I put in like whatever thousand of dollars. Yes, yes, uh, stuff, you have so. to, you have to, and you know, yeah. and, and now you know my advice is good because I'm telling you, don't come and do business with us until you get this figured out. It's critically important, yeah. right? It, it it's just critically yeah. important. But I think, you know, the tendency in your mind is to think because it, you you had to work yourself up big time to do that, right? You had to go and get the things, and then you're like, oh my god, I'm gonna have to go live on video. This is terrifying, and then you did it. The the tendency in our mind is to think like. Okay, I did it that once. I'm done. Oh no, you're yeah. not done, brother. You got to go do 20 of them. Go do I'm just getting started. <laughs> yeah, go. You got to go do 20 of them, right? Because it's like you know your job is to catch a fish, and you went fishing the one time, and it didn't work out. And you're like, that's it. I'm done with fishing. You're not done with fishing. You're just getting started, right? You're just getting started. So you you, you need to do it. You need to do it a couple more times, right? And it it's weird early on because total chicken and the egg situation, right? Like if you don't have attention then how do you know that you have it in front of enough eyeballs to know whether or not it'll sell, right? Like in the pre-COVID days, it was very easy to go and get a booth for the day and see 100 people, right? Those right. days are out. Now you have to do it digitally. So you keep doing it digitally until you figure it out. But you're, you're, you are on the path, man. You are straight up on the path. You just need to do that a couple more times. And you know, if the sales do come in and you did, you did great following up with that warm lead, the hand-to-hand -hand combat, like that is always key. You're, 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 you're on the path. Oh, I just realized I was using the wrong mic. Sorry. You're on the path. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I should just basically do something similar yes. again this yes. week. Like how yes. many days should I wait to do it? Like uh, I would, I would, well, I would say take today off, take tomorrow okay. off. Uh, do Wednesday. <laughs> well, yeah. Look on Wednesday, 
Turn on the news. Unless we have a civil war. <laughs> is 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 the country embroiled in a civil war? Are any buildings on fire? If not, I would probably I would probably wait till Thursday. In all honesty, because <laughs> okay. it 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 is it is just bananas time right now from top to bottom. Um, yeah. But don't feel like you need to do the sales process every time either. Like you can, but sometimes just grab the piece, talk about your inspiration, talk about your motivation, and just do two of them and just say thanks for hanging out and end it. Any comments, any questions, just leave me a comment below and end it, right? Like I right. would, if I were in your exact shoes, I'd be like, okay, I did it once. The world didn't end. It was actually <laughs> kind of fun. Now I'm going to do 30 of them. Wow. 30 of them. And just oh my do the 30. Do the 30. And, and, and again, you know I'm not full of it because I, how many of these things do I do a week? Right? Like, I learn. I get better each and every time. Like, I understand the technology better. Like, you know, I upgrade my mic and I get cool lighting where I can change my background. Like, you know, you just, you keep leveling up on the process. And I, no joke, believe it is the future of not just selling art and photography, but pretty much selling everything. Right? Like, you know, I gave, I gave the example a while back, but there's, there's this guy called uh, Mark Andreessen. Early on, he invented the Netscape browser and became like one of the first like mega millionaires. And now he's got a venture capital fund called Day 16Z. And they study extensively globally trends that are taking place, right? Because it's the next big thing. And in China, this concept of live video commerce is just like exploding. And I'll give you a for mm -hmm. instance. There was an apple farmer and he would sell his harvest to the local distribution company. And the local distribution company would take all the crates and load it up and go and take it to the various different supermarkets. He decided to turn on his camera and start walking through his orchards and talking about the fruit and talking about you know the roots and talking about the soil balance and filming it at its early stages. And the next thing you know, he ends up building up a customer list that is so significant that want their fruit shipped directly from him that he now has a robust direct business where he's charging retail and he's making all of those rips, right? He's got a huge business now. And he's just walking through his orchards talking about his process, right? It's no different than you talking about your process, how you created that image. And he's getting more and more comfortable with it. And guess what? People want to buy direct. People love eliminating the middleman. So that's where you're at. That's what I'd start doing. Talk about, so mix it up a little bit, you know? Yes, every once in a while, I'll do a flash sale. Guys, the election's over. The country's not on fire. I don't care. It's not about politics, but I'm celebrating. For the next 24, as long as I'm on this video chat in the next 24 hours, anybody that wants to buy one of my pieces, 50% off. But I'll, I'll tell you, I was reading, um, I was reading yesterday, or not yesterday, last week, uh, there's this, it doesn't matter about the gal, but there's this gal that has this website. And she was talking about Picasso. And evidently, back in the day with Picasso, there was this like Hungarian photographer that was like also a writer. And they somehow p paired him with Picasso. And he's like, you write a book about him and download all of his creative process. And this is like when he was right around in his 50s. And so he was barely even hitting his peak. And Picasso said this thing. He's like, first of all, he burned the bridges, burned the boats, right? He got on the boat, said, I'm going to be a professional artist. He got to the other side of the river, and he burned the boat. There was no going back for him. And he goes, you know what? My stuff, a lot of the times, did not sell for a top dollar price, but it all sold. It all sold. And, and, and I think that's so genius, right? Because that guy was constantly trying different things. He, when he died, he had 45,000 pieces unsold in his inventory that his family had to squabble over. 45,000. Um, so you know what your prices are from day. Move that inventory, okay? Play around with prices play around two for one, do not lose money, break even at the lowest, but move the inventory, right? Move the okay. inventory. Like this thing's got to go. I got limited space in my apartment. Uh, uh, I, my new exercise bike just arrived, like whatever, <laughs> whatever you want to say, right? But like, it's got to go. So, so just get creative and don't worry about it. You know, don't worry about it. People are going to find it entertaining. Your friends are going to love it. And oh, by the way, no one knows that you're all of a sudden in business to do this. It's gonna take them a little while to figure it out, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, they have you know, to catch up. Yeah, I mean, but also it's like, you know, one of your friends that saw that is sat down at a coffee shop today, socially distanced, and having a nice conversation with the friend, and the friend is like, yeah, you know, I'm redecorating my office, and I got so much to do. I just got a couch. My wife found we bought used on Craigslist, but I need some art pieces. And he's, your buddy's gonna be like, dude, you know what? Jonathan's got some sick stuff that he's trying to sell right now. So I'm gonna connect you with him, right? Like uh, that's how it happens. But it, you, don't get hung up on the fact that you just did it the first time. Right. Go right. and do right. it more. Go and get the reps and sets. But make sure you have in your mind the 30. I want you to aim for the 30 number because then you're going to okay. get into you're going to get to number six and you're like, hey, I got 30 to go. OK, I got 30 to go. Like, boom, 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 boom. 
and then reassess. That's where you're at. And I should do the 30 before I join Art Store. Art Store. <laughs> Is that what you're suggesting? It's, it's not about before or after joining Art Store Friends. It's the validation. Uh, okay. you got to get validated right. that what... you got to get those sales. You, yeah. you have yeah. to get the validation that, you, you know, yeah. you have a product the market wants. Like, I think... Okay. And again, you know, it, it's so funny because this is honestly the single solitary biggest problem for artists and photographers that exist, period, is validating the work. But it's funny yeah. because there are degrees to validation, right? We started originally, we put all of our customers in one workshop, okay? One workshop. And it was sort of like starting a school and putting kindergartners uh, all the way up to graduate students in one schoolhouse. That doesn't work, right? So yeah. we started separating them out on, on revenue thresholds. And we now have a threshold that's... $2,000 or less, okay? So they haven't gotten to $2,000 yet. And there's a lot of validation issues in there. And the tendency for the artist or the photographer is to take the lack of sales, the lack of validation as some sort of personal criticism, right? Your work's not good enough. You're a crappy artist. You're a crappy photographer. Nothing could be further from the truth at all. All the world's telling you is you're a cook. They don't like that dish. Make another one. Make another one, right? <laughs> like Picasso died with 45,000 pieces in his inventory. Not every one of those was a home run, right? He was constantly trying things. And sometimes you have to make a crappy dish to arrive at the awesome dish. So yeah. you have to think through like what your niche is, um, are people liking it? And just you know, be very, very um, attuned to the feedback you are getting. And when you get into a conversation and they don't buy, can you just answer, ask them the honest question and be like, just out of curiosity, if you were close to buying any of them, what would you buy? And, and if not, do you have any ideas in the direction I should go? I love asking those questions too. And I'll, and I'll, and I'll, say, I'll say this as a final. So the CEO of this company and I, okay, we were, um, we've known each other forever. And the very first business we ever started was this business together. And uh, it, was, it was a clothing business that we had back in the day, okay? And this was just so profound for me. And I'll, I'll never forget this. And so we were in downtown LA trying to, to find some like cut and sew people to like make our pants and shorts and everything else, right? And there's this older black dude standing outside of, of the fashion shop and he's real slick and, and he like dressed, dressed to the nines, he's like leaning on a Lexus and he's like, you guys trying to get something made? We're like, yeah, we're trying to get a jacket made. He goes, let me, let me, let me get you a jacket, I'll meet you, here. I'll, I'll meet you here two days later. Two days later we meet him there and he's got this killer jacket that he, that he got sewed and the whole thing done. And I was like, okay, that's it, how do we work together? And so we ended up working with this guy for like four years. He, he was a mentor to Nick and I, the CEO, more than anything else. But here's what he did. He goes, okay, I'm going to teach you guys something brilliant today. Watch this. And we would jump in his car, okay? And first, we would go directly to Fred Siegel in downtown LA, which was like the tastemaker store, okay, clothing store. And he'd walk us into the clothing store, and he goes, I want you guys both on my heels. Watch this. And he would just go up to every single solitary person that was on the floor selling, what's moving right now? What can't you keep in? Show me. Show me the styles. Show it to me. And each person in the store would say, we can't keep this in. We can't keep this in. This stuff's flying off the shelf. Everybody's saying they love this. They love that. They love that. And he goes, okay. We'd write down the notes. We'd do the takeaway outside of the store, get in the car, and then we'd go to Melrose. We did it nine, nine to 15 stores in Melrose. And then sit, we'd come back to the office, and he goes, okay, let's get it on the board. What's selling and why? What are the trends that are driving these sales? What is so interesting about that? What is so interesting about that? And that's never left me. Like you got to know what's selling sometimes and what's hot to get some ideas. And so I, I leave you with that too, but you're already on the track 30 times. Thanks so much. Yeah. Okay. Next up is Brian and then it's going to go Jeffrey and then we'll go to Mary. Brian, you're up. I'll let you know when you get the unmute. Uh, sorry. Uh, yep. Gotcha. So pricing there's mm -hmm. current specials can you just do like a quick nutshell of like ballpark price for the intro site and the other one and then what the difference of the site of uh, the the specials are going on uh ish yeah. ish i could tell you where it starts <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm i'm pretty removed from like the whole sales process and they, and they have been working on some crazy sales um so the best thing to do is like when you have you requested a demo uh i I did earlier and now, but I'm ready to do it now. I did it a few, couple months yeah. ago. But April, April will put the link in the, ch in the chat. The, the reason is, is because I'll hack and stumble and, and fumble all over the details. What happens when you request a okay. demo is somebody on the outreach team calls you and it's like a 10 minute exploratory phone call and they'll tell you everything, answer all the questions. Okay. At the end of it, you say, okay, I, I want to schedule the demo. And then that's when you go into all the bells and whistles of the software. And it's okay. like, you know, like a 45 minute screen share. But the base plan, 
the base plan I know starts at a thousand and I think forty five dollars a month or something like that. I think that's a base plan. And then what is the the next? There's there's basically two sites, right? I think there's three to be honest. Three, okay. Yeah, I, th I I think there's three different levels. I mean the 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 largest abstraction, and, and, and I've said this, we, we know Art Storefronts is a business that the only way we'll survive and thrive is if we create successful customers. And that sounds cliche, but it's not, right? And it's not easy either. So the, the upfront fee that you pay is essentially your tuition to a university that never closes. It never closes. It never will close. It never can close because too much changes in the digital marketing landscape out there and the marketing landscape in general. So what, what that fee allows us to do is have the requisite amount of staff to teach marketing week in, week out, all year long, and that will never stop. So it's, you know, it's, it's sort of, I, I guess I'm saying it's, it's kind of hard to compare us to anyone else is really what it comes down to. But that's what I would, that's what I would do, Ryan. They'll, they'll be able to answer it. And I, I don't want to lead you astray because I don't know all the details. Okay. Okay, cool. All right, next up is Jeffrey. You'll need to unmute Jeffrey. Yep, gotcha. Um, is it appropriate to ask uh, if you're part of any, or is there any sister ship, uh, uh, partnership with your company? No, what do you mean when you say partnership? Uh, sometimes you have a company that another company owns partnership, but they're not, you know. Yeah, no, no, no. Visible. Visible with it, but um, yeah, no, not I mean, at all. How long you been in? How long you been in the art storefronts? Been um, in business? Yeah, so art storefronts I think is coming up on seven years. Um, it's one hundred percent owned by the CEO. The CEO's name is Nick Friend. You can Google him. Before this, he started a company called Breathing Color, uh, which is one of the largest manufacturers of fine art paper. And so, CEO with a pretty impressive track record, I'd say. Also, a CEO with. Uh, a track record of not taking any external funding and owning all of it. So, you know, right. there's, that's, yeah. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. It's good. Um, yeah. Bandwidth options. Um, megabytes, if there, if there's, if the, any customer who even looks at it, do they have to take on any cookies? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. We have an extremely, we, so we have, most people don't know what a cookie is and I'll just, I'll sort of explain it. Well, I guess, I guess in today's day and age, thanks to the good old EU and seeing those stupid banners, do you accept cookies, right? Which every single solitary person on the world just clicks, yes, okay, get this stupid pop up out of my browser. Um, I hate that thing. Anyway, the, the, we have a proprietary cookie that's exclusive to us that is deeply embedded into the software, deeply, deeply embedded into the software. And let me give you kind of some for instance. Uh, the easiest way to describe it is our cookie is like a little video camera in the upper corner of your store, okay? And if Mary walks into my store and she looks at one piece of artwork and then another piece of artwork and then she adds one piece to her cart and then leaves, the cookie will tell you exactly what Mary did. But it doesn't just tell you. That's not revolutionary in and of itself. It'll tell you where she came from. So let's say Mary clicked on a Facebook ad. And then she came to the store and looked at all of those items and then left. So the system will say, Mary came to the store from this Facebook ad. She looked at this, this, and this, and she put this in her cart. So you'll get flagged by our system that said, Mary just came to your site, Jeff. She looked at this, she looked at this, and she put this in her cart. And it will instantaneously populate an email for you with language that we recommend to send to Mary. Yeah. Hey, Mary, saw you put this in your store. What's that? She'll have that option of not being having that done, correct? Yeah, if she wants. Yeah. No, yeah. no, no, absolutely not. Absolutely not. No, every single solitary person gets cookied. You get cookied on every single solitary website you go to, period. The e right, I'm not, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know. Um, some sites I'd rather have them not follow me more than others. Oh, I would, I would, I would prefer 100% of them don't follow me, in all honesty. Um, but, you know, re really the analogy is like, don't drive down this road. There's video cameras on it. Like, who doesn't right. drive down the road, right? Like, um, yeah. Do the cookies take up a lot of bandwidth or um, megabytes if they load it on? No, and you don't have to worry about that because we handle all the hosting and we pay for all the data. So you, there's, uh, yeah, there's nothing, there's nothing there. Um, for you. you talk about moderations during the member part, uh, member participation. Is there a moderator there in case there's not the best type of, um, you know, everybody chats at once, what have you? 
oh yeah, it's run exactly like this. I'm, I'm on a bunch of them. My team members are on a bunch of them. The CEO is on a bunch of them. Questions go one at a time. Uh, you know, there's some stuff that happens in the chat, but we have an extremely uh, a positive community because we curate it as such, right? Like we don't, we don't, we don't allow any shenanigans whatsoever. We don't even allow very much negativity either. In all honesty, um, being an entrepreneur is a lonely road, and if you, you've never been on it before, you're maybe not completely aware of the fact that it turns out it's a roller coaster. There's highs and then there's lows. The last thing that we need is a pity party on the lows, right? Like we need to buck you up and get going, right? And that's just the nature yeah. of being an entrepreneur. And one, one quick lastly thing, I know I've been, uh, I've had websites built um, for my production company at one point mm -hmm. and things don't work out and guess what uh he's not gonna give me the password to edit my own website no that would never happen with us period never has happened yeah. never will yeah plus you own everything right like you own all the email contacts and you own ultimately the url so even if you know in some strange world where you know like to be honest with you even even the people that that you know in any business that you run, you're gonna get all kinds of people, right? And you're gonna get some crazy people no matter what. Even the crazy people that have come in and for a whole bunch of different reasons, we decided it just wasn't a good relationship. We, we still provide a heck of a parachute on the way out. Customer service is so important to us. So you've got months, even in the worst case of worst case scenario, you have months to, to get everything moved. Whatever, once you move everything, it's your traffic, it's your email list, it's your everything. The artist, the photographer owns everything. It's so important. <laughs> These are all questions the boss my wife would ask. So I have to totally get it. I have one of those too. I have one of those too. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> um, so good job. Thank you today. Uh, if I s s s um, zoom out, um, um, I'll get an email, what have you, to give me a breakdown in prices and stuff, correct? Yep, my pleasure. All right. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you. Okay, it's going to go Mary, then Virginia, then Charles, then Laura. Okay, Mary, you're unmuted. Hello. How's it going? Oh my gosh, you have some work behind you on the wall. You heard, I know you did. I did, I did. Oh. <laughs> Congrats. But that's actually part of my question when you mm -hmm. were talking to Brian Yeah. Uh, about um, doing 30, I said, ooh, okay. Yeah, uh, yeah. So now, my question really is like how kind of you know basically speaking uh you know a few times a week a couple times a month yeah whatever 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 works for you i mean i would the 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 perspective is so important right the perspective like j mm -hmm. just like i said to him and i'll say to you and again i'm living it okay i practice what i preach i'm live six days a week sometimes multiple times a day because i know in my head how important this is Right. And I have the perspective of how long it's going to take. And I know that there's a halo effect. Right. So, again, I think the perspective is huge. And, you know, in your stage where you are, Mary, I would do multiple a week. If you can only do one a week, do one a week until you can do two. Once you can start doing okay. two a week, then do three, then do four. Right. And, and figure, come into a rhythm that's comfortable and just be online. Like the, 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 the abstraction, the way to think about it is it's just your retail store on the Internet. Okay. okay. Every time you're live, it's open. <clears throat> it's hmm. open. Okay. Right. So, you know, <laughs> yeah, you can take breaks and everything else, but it, it, it is, it is, it is a skill set that will only become more and more valuable. It mm -hmm. is no different than, you know, anything else practice, but you know, you know how you get to Carnegie hall practice, practice. practice. Yep. And <laughs> you know, you're, you're going through your validation steps and stages right now and figuring it out. Okay. This is not okay. any single solitary one of these lives that you run. You merchandising, you selling, you talking about the inspiration for your work. Those are not mm -hmm. wasted in, in the slightest, even if the medium you're at right now is not the one you're inevitably going to end up with. Because it's just okay. how you sell, how you merchandise, how you get comfortable, the timing, the pacing, uh, uh, okay. not losing your cool when every single solitary technological thing <laughs> breaks, uh, learning <laughs> to laugh, being deering, getting people to understand who Mary is, what makes her tick. Uh, how funny she is. All of those things are just, God, they're critical. They're just so critical, you know? Okay. I, I did uh, I did an art business morning. You guys got to subscribe to the show if you haven't already. April, will you, put, will you put both the subscribe link in there? Honestly, it's a free show and it's amazing uh, to toot my own horn. But it, what's interesting <laughs> about it is like I'm grabbing the data, okay, in real time, 
you know, mm-hmm. and and instantaneously just vomited it out on that show in a good way, such that you get a you get a real interesting window into what's actually happening. And I think the last in April, will you get the link? The last show was on video. I stole mm-hmm. I stole the title from the Rage and Cajun James Carville when he said uh, it's the economy stupid, and instead I said it's video stupid. You got to listen to yeah. this. It's, it, it's really really good. I put some really really good um, data into this one, but. It, it, it just speaks to the fact that I've found, you know, we, we fundamentally at our core art storefronts is a business that operates with prem, under premises, right? We say, what's the premise, okay? And then go prove it out or, or not, right? And a, a firmly held premise I have, I actually have it written down right here, so I'm gonna read it uh, verbatim mm-hmm. as I have it because I think it's so important. Hold on. <clears throat> da, 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 da. Where is my premise? Where is it? It's, it's good, so I want to read it verbatim. Now I can't find it, of course. Don't go it. Where is it? I, okay, I don't know where it is, but I'm just going to say. Um, I fundamentally, and we fundamentally have a premise, we believe that video, okay, video in either one-to-one or one-to-many is the most effective and efficient way for us to sign up new customers, to get our current customers unstuck, to communicate more fi- efficiently, effectively. I mean, I, I, I give the analogy in that episode, which I think is, is, ju- is just so true. Outbound marketing, what I'm technically doing right now, pre-COVID, pre-video, and no video is not new, but I, in that episode, I talk about a bunch of the history about why it's, it's exploding now. Mm-hmm. I'd, get you on, I'd show you a Facebook ad, and maybe you'd come to the website and ignore me. And then I'd show you 10 more Facebook ads. And then maybe you'd come back to the website and then get on the email list. And then maybe I'd email you for a couple of months during the course of that. Maybe you'd listen to a podcast episode or watch a YouTube video or come back to the site again. Then maybe you'd put in a demo and get on the phone. Well, that process would have been six to nine months, maybe, let's just say, right? Now, there are people that saw that same Facebook ad yesterday. They clicked the link on the Zoom. Now they're in here and we're having a face-to-face chat. You got to see if I know what I'm talking about. Are these someone that I can know, like, and trust, right? Is this someone mm-hmm. I would even consider doing business? So I've just taken six to nine months, okay, and I've truncated it into 48 hours. What kind of a difference do you think that makes to the video? I think 1,000% that video is the most efficient and effective way uh, to get no like, and trust, and yes, sell things, yes, get people unstuck. If that's my premise, it's the same premise for you. You can prove it out or mm. not, but selling directly via video is the most efficient way you can do anything, right? Um, nice. and, and there's some really good tips in that. So make, make sure you watch that one. It's, it's really good. Um, let's see. Yeah, I will. Uh-huh. And um, let's see. I had another question. Uh, oh, yes. Um, the, I, I did get a lot of eyes on the, the one show that I did. Uh-huh. Um, but my problem still is the fact that, you know, even though I, I've gained a few more people because of it, which has been really nice, mm-hmm. um, I don't want to come off like I'm just trying to, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't, don't, so just talk about the work. Just talk about the work next time. Also, too, there's, there's this mm-hmm. tendency to think like, you know, everybody saw that. Nobody saw that. Okay. Nobody saw that. One percent of your followers saw that. Not everybody saw that. It's like when you send an email and you're like, I can't email this list again. I just emailed them last week. Dude, you, do you look at every email you get? No. Do you open every email you get? No. You know, we're busy. Okay. It, doesn't, it doesn't happen like that at all. So don't worry about that. That's, okay. that's one of those things that gets stuck in our head. Like, so just, just talk about the work. Don't worry about it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. And one final thing is that um, uh, this is really teaching me a lot. And I think I actually might just share that with people because you make a good point about being transparent. Mm-hmm. I think that kind of helps people connect. Um, uh, when I started, I ordered something and I didn't do all of the, the thing that you suggested really because I just couldn't afford to get all the different parts right now. Um, I just got prints, um, and then found out later that there's a minimum. So the, so that the price I put needs to be much higher in order for me to be able to do it. Did you, who, um, did you order through us? Actually, I didn't. Yeah. Uh, I ordered through a local place just uh, to yeah, just save. Yeah, make it easy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep, all I good. Could. Because I, I, I knew that the, the I'm in a really weird circuit, well, as is the rest of the planet. Yeah. 
it should be in India, you know, because we uh, we had moved there, and because of all this craziness, we had to move back, and it's been a lot of, yes. you know, stuff up in the air and everything like that. So I was just trying to do it as as um, quickly as I could, just so that I could know for myself, like you said, uh, that this was something people actually wanted to to purchase, yep. rather than just let my own head overwhelm me again and yep. you know and not not get moving um but uh but that's a, that's a point as well like like seeing if there's pieces that i can order through that and if it would be cheaper um i i don't know do you guys have a minimum i don't think like so no no i don't think so no yeah. okay ah well then that, yep. that teaches me something okay yep. yeah they they have a minimum and i didn't know that and nobody mentioned it before i yeah it's it's started. It's really hard. Like, it's really hard for the little guys right now. They're 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 going to start dropping like well, they already have been dropping like flies, but they're going to continue to drop like flies. So that's just how it is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it's asfprints.com. It'll it'll be in the show notes. It always is. You've seen it. So okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Yep. Congrats, Mary. I like it. Forward progress. Forward progress. You're stepping towards it. Okay. It's going to go Virginia Charles, then Laura H. Go ahead, Virginia. You'll need to unmute. I'll let you know. Okay. Just, yep. Gotcha. Uh, Patrick, I, I actually am here because I saw your print company mm -hmm. and uh, I do digital art. Mm -hmm. I'm not a photographer. Yep. So, um, you know, a lot of artists try to say, oh, yeah, just sell your prints. And they don't realize because I've been in business. I'm retired. Mm -hmm. And I they don't understand that I would spend all my time packing and shipping. Yes. If I was going to sell my print, yes. that's crazy. I know. It's I a disaster. need, you know, the yeah. The, so the print on demand is is opened everything up for me. Yeah. Um, and but the thing is, at this point, uh, what what I do actually is I make sculpture out of my own prints. Some you know all kinds of stuff that I do. Right? Yeah. But I want to just sell the print to yeah. make money on this. You know, make money yes and uh, be, because i'm not doing this for the money i'm doing this because i'm an artist and i just would do it yeah um so there's no minimum on your print orders what's the story about getting samples uh so i could because I, I i hate to like sell things blind and not even know yeah for sure yeah it's, no it's it's super easy so what what i would do what i always advocate and now i'm gonna have to go get my stack here so hold on right that's all right stack. I, I'm getting my pen and pencil out too. My wife was in here the other day and she's like, can we get rid of this? And I was like, no, I use it every day. And here I am maintaining my integrity. Okay. Okay. You can, you can get an order like this of the six important media types, which I say two paper right. prints, right? And my green screen might make some of them look a little right. wonky, but pa wait, yeah. wait, this is, I have to write this down. So give me a second too. Yep. So uh, start with small paint, paper prints. Yeah. Okay. Tiny, tiny. So th this whole order that I'm going to cycle through right here, I think right. is like 140 bucks or something like that. Uh -huh. I think I don't, maybe not with the frames, but fine art. I don't need frame. I yeah. don't need frames. A yeah. textured fine art paper, a photo paper. I can't tell which one's which. Yeah. A canvas, right? So you can you can see the canvas, you can show it, all oh, of that. Canvas. Okay. Yeah, you can look at the styles. A metal, very important. Also, yeah, very you know, very important. Very me. important, ready to hang. Yeah. Um, the new kid on the block, as it were, which is acrylic. Um, beautiful, right. a little bit more expensive, but I, I love how it looks. It's phenomenal. Yeah. And then okay. the final is wood, the sleeper, which is people love this. You'd be surprised. Okay. No one even knows it exists. So. You have those, and for like you know, uh -huh. 150 bucks, you can get an order in, and you can do it through us, or you can do it through your local printer. Doesn't matter to me. Uh, it, it's not like we make like tens of millions of dollars on our printing. We don't care. We want to just get the no, samples in uh, your hands. No, I understand. And you can, and you can, you can look at the 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 prints and feel confident that you're selling it. But you know, and, and I've said this on these calls a bunch of times, and it's and it's sort of sad. You know, 10 or 15 years ago, there was art form in who was doing the printing. Now that's kind of gone away. And sadly, it's gone away because the technology yeah. is so good that everyone's using the same thing to calibrate the monitors. Mm -hmm. Everyone's mm -hmm. printing on the exact same printers with the exact right. same inks, with the exact same media types. And so the, the result you're going to get from this one versus this one, no one is going to be able to tell. And your consumer yeah. certainly will not be able to tell. Yeah. So the two, well, printers, the two printers we use is Bay Photo on the West Coast, Graphic Dimensions on yeah. the East Coast. Both of these companies oh. do like... 
you know, 30 or $40 million a year. I don't think even more than that. So they, uh, they're very good at what they do. I guess that's just one example. Uh, Because I'm doing digital art, you know, my colors, I I mean, I'm in, this is my third Zoom class today. Believe me, I'm losing my Yes, that's a lot. Yes. (laughs) I had my art class this morning and everybody, the painters are like, oh, it's so great. I said, you don't understand, guys. I'm making my work digitally. Therefore, when you see it, it looks fantastic. It's not a photograph of a painting, yes. you know? Yeah. So I don't, I'm not worried, you know, too much, except, you know, maybe, you know, my reds are really important to me. Yeah. Uh, but I, the problem is that I really do want to market large scale um, metal uh, mm-hmm. eventually, um, maybe do corporate work because my work is pretty, you know, pretty uh, contemporary. Yep. Yep. It, but that's all right. Uh, my other issue is with the video. I do very contemporary work. I've been an artist for a long time, but mm-hmm. I'm really now into all of this very, very ultra modern digital. I'm, I'm printing digitally and gluing it on metal and cutting it out. Okay. Well, so, that's great. Um, yeah. <laughs> and uh, the thing is, doing a video, I mean, I don't know how old I look to you guys, but I'm 76. And I don't, I think to the turnoff for the kind of market that I'm probably going to attract. It's totally, I mean, it's totally not. It's totally not. That is, that is, that is a flawed premise to the extreme, right? And, and, less, and, and let's just, <laughs> let me just throw this out. If you've been on three Zooms today, I'd say you're pretty comfortable on video at this juncture. <laughs> I think, I think you've got this one covered. But I just, you know, I mean, in my field, whatever I've been doing, I, you know, there's a lot of age discrimination and I also had retail stores up like seven. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I know how much work and that's why I retired at, at, at this point. Yeah. And so the point, the thing that you showed me today is that I'm wasting money on my empty Shopify store because I created a whole website to market my prints on handbags and t-shirts and everything. Yeah. And when I finally got the tax form and everything, COVID hit and the factories bro- shut down. So yep. I have everything ready to go and I don't even know what I want to sell. This is why I've been hesitating. I, st- I have everything ready to go and I'm thinking maybe I just do bags because I don't want to listen to people that buy small sizes and want returns. I mean, I tell them right there, you know, yeah. look at the model. If you're that size, fine. Otherwise, order something bigger. And yeah. I just decided I might just go ahead with that as a business. I don't have a storefront or anything. I'm paying Shopify, but, um, you know, the marketing is a lot of work. I paid for this guy to get a whole course on marketing and Facebook and everything. And you never and finished it. Pay- and you never finished I'm it. Still- and I'm still paying him off. Yeah. I, I, I am paid off one company. So I've been already investing a lot of money. And in the end, it turns out that the only thing that's supporting me are my smart buys on the stock exchange. Well, good, good. That, uh, that, that can, that can certainly uh, subsidize. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Yeah. Cause I, you know, I know the hardware and I got all tech stock and I, you know, I've been doing well. Good for you. And, uh, but my question is basically, I don't, the reason I hesitate is I don't know what direction I want to go as a fine artist with a BFA and everything. They don't I, doing this is really like a, against the grain for these people. But you know, I'm 76. I can't wait forever to make some money. So That's right. I want to go ahead, but I have the, 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 the um, handbags and everything ready to go. But I thought I would just do a digital uh, print sell only digital prints Mm -hmm. because um i you know because this is something i could do without all this work you know they they're going to print it they're going to ship it and all this stuff meanwhile i can have lists to try to market my sculpture but sculpture you know it takes a long time yeah and uh, i'm in with all these painters and they're turning out all this work and i get so annoyed you know because it takes me months not weeks to make a piece of work so I don't know that I'm, I'm going to sell that, but I'm thinking if I get people liking my digital work, then I can start to maybe market, you know, the sculpture. Yeah. Uh, but I just don't know which business to do on your store. You don't, yeah, you, 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 you don't have to decide right out of the gates. Like, again, the most important thing, and I wouldn't worry about the fact that you're, you're 76. I mean, I, I literally have had people on the Zoom calls that have been like 87, 88, 89, and even a 90-year-old. Yeah. And by the way, he unmuted yeah. himself on the call, no problem. Then he's like... Should I start a website? And I was like, 
Okay, I, you're 90. I, 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 you're 90. If you don't have family members to pass this down to, I was like, no, don't do it. And I gave, I gave yeah. him some advice on what to do. Yeah. But No, I, yeah, I, no, I understand. I've been in this uh, computer world since 1989. So yeah. I used to actually do professional websites. It's just too much. Oh, yeah, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't need to do it. Yeah. It's, it it's, very, it's very easy on our platform to get up running and ready. And then, you know, it's which one to sell. You don't have to worry about that. You let the market decide, but you have to, you have to work on the market and you have to get people coming to the website, taking a look, and then, and then they'll let you know what the, what the hot items are. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, you know, I mean, I, I, like I said, I already had the demo almost a year ago, but that's when I decided that I missed the, I want to get the Christmas sale. So I went and I did the, the handbags and stuff. And then that never happened. Yeah. Uh, so I might go back to the prints. Yeah. And so you, you, the printers that are on your website that you recommend, which one was that? Because it was a website that you had a print company. Yeah. So it's, it's asfprints.com. Um, okay. What that'll allow you to do is it's, it's with graphic dimensions, our, our printer on the um, East coast and it'll put oh, an order in. I'm in New York city. So that's yeah. cool. <laughs> yep. So you'll, you'll get, you'll get all of the, um, you know, you'll, well, you'll get to see the quality, I guess, right? So uh, what do I do if I try to ask for this package? Do they have, like, a promo package that, like you were mentioning? How would I? You just upload upload the images you want, pick the samples, make sure they're small, and, um, okay. yeah. All right, so just pick the small samples. Yes. Okay. Yeah. All righty. They're much, Thank you, Patrick. much easier to show in video. I, I, I'm very excited about this because... Unfortunately, I don't want to do the work you're talking about, but since nobody else mentions it, I know that's what it takes to make a sale. It is. Uh, it is. No, really. My family was in sales, and I'm not a good salesperson, so that's you, why I try to avoid it, but it, you can't avoid it. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, okay. I was going to make a point in there, and then I forgot what I was going to do. It'll come back to me in a uh, second. Okay, next up is Charles, and then it's going to go Laura. So go ahead, Charles. There we go. I think I'm unmuted. Yeah, gotcha. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Thanks. Uh, just had my 10-minute conversation today and probably will schedule the demo, but I had two two questions. Mm -hmm. um, did I hear you mention, or I want to know a little bit more about the validation process that mm -hmm. some people were describing, mm -hmm. and did I hear you write that there's a 2,000 minimum sales before joining? No, 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 no. So okay. we, we essentially, like, th th these Zoom sessions, kind of like what you're on now, has fundamentally and forever changed our business. Pre-COVID, we weren't doing them. We started like two weeks before COVID hit. We started doing them, right? And we have, you know, as you saw in the demo, a marketing calendar and these playbooks and everything else, right? And we used to just publish them and say like, welcome aboard, Charles, great. Just go read that stuff, follow the calendar. We wish you the best, right? That's not enough, right? The problem with digital education is just, it's not enough. You have to have you know, in-person sessions with the teacher and also be learning from your peers and everything else. And so started having these Zoom sessions, right? Problem is, is that we have some people that are on the way to a million dollars in yearly sales. We have some people that are well into six figures. We have some people that are in between 50,000 and 100,000. We have some people that are above 12,000 and 50,000. And then we have people that are just getting started. And we were putting all those people in one group and teaching them all together. Well, you can imagine what happens in that situation. All the ones that are doing really well are like, I can't deal with these beginner questions anymore. I'm out. And so we since started st pulling them apart. And so now we have like an advanced session for people that are doing really well. We have a, you know, a general session for everyone. And, and you, you can attend any one. You just can't ask questions in certain ones. And then we have these sessions that it, we just launched the first one on Monday, actually, which is pretty awesome. If you haven't yet hit $2,000 on your art storefront site online. So that's it. That's, that's a step. Then we put you in this class. And what we do is we just we teach the same stuff. We just teach a little bit less of it, right? So what happens is, is that like the minute you come on, we get a good deal of people that are like, I'm drinking from a fire hose. This is insane. I have so much to learn. And we just take a bunch of that stuff out in that, fr in that first you know, under 2,000 session. And the whole goal is just to get you up and over and through it, right? The, the, the validation piece, though, is without question the single solitary most important skill set, in my opinion, that an artist or a photographer can have. And we're not the first ones that came up with it or, you know, uh, arrived at it. Like, that's why I use Picasso because he's the greatest example. But we have some of our most successful artists are the best at validating new ideas, meaning you have a restaurant that's open, right? This is the way to think of it. And 
it's doing fine. It's profitable. But it's not mapping to your expectations that you want the business to grow to, right? You're like, this thing's good. This restaurant's working. But I'm busting my butt in here, and I don't feel like I'm making enough money out of it. So what, what everyone's tendency to do is worried that it's their art, their style, who they are as a person, their race, color, creed, right? Their political affiliation, any of those things. That you, 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 your, your tendency is to internalize it. All we teach you to do is say, guess what? That's not the case. You just need to come up with some new dishes. Here's how you test new dishes out. And guess what? You should always be testing new dishes. You should never not stop testing new dishes because what you'll find is a home run, right? It's almost like, it's almost like dating, right? Like you go out and date a bunch and then when you meet the one, do you know that feeling in comparison to all the rest of the feelings? It's like, okay, this is the one. Like you figure that out when you arrive at a new style. But the only way you're gonna do that is if you're dating. And so many artists and photographers don't date. They just do their style and they barely change it up. And especially early on, there's this tendency to think like, I've been a landscape photographer for 15 years and I've been hiking in the Appalachian Trail for the last seven and getting all of these photos and that's what I'm gonna sell, images of the Appalachian Trail. The problem is, is there's about 100,000 images of every single solitary image of the Appalachian Trail that you have. That's a tough road to hoe. So the next thing you know, okay, I'm just gonna photograph these various different types of leaves on the certain tree in the Appalachian, that's gonna be when you're trying something new, right? And, you, and, you, and you're constantly wanting to experiment along the way to figure that out, that's number one. Number two, in terms of validation, you have to have sold art or photography to people not named mom, dad, brother, sister, family, friends. They'll buy anything from you, right? Everyone thinks like, oh, so many people told me my work is amazing. Oh, I've gotten to a juried show. Oh, uh, people say, buy, like, create a book, right? Well, the only thing that can tell you is a transaction, right? Is a transaction from people you don't know. Once you have that, you're validated that your art will work. The problem is, is that you get a lot of people that say, yeah, 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 I'm validated, but they're not really validated, right? So that ends up being a big thing that we work on. But it's really just a part of business, right? You have to like iterate. Like art storefronts started as a business, just selling softwares to printers, just to people that printed, that own printing shops, right? We realized that wasn't gonna make it. What do we do? We tried a new idea. We shifted completely to artists, forever changed the business. So there you go. Great, no, that makes sense, thanks. Yeah. The second question is, um, so, so I've got my own domain name yep. and I'm actually in the process of kind of switching sites, smug, smug mug, and then, mm -hmm. um, um, fine arts America. And it's yeah. kind of gotten confused and the security isn't set up right. And yep, all that kind yep, of stuff. Yep. Are your sites all kind of all inclusive? If I have a go domain name. Yeah. So our, our team you, will you help, help me get all set exactly. up. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of yep, right? yep. Well, you don't, the HTTPS is just a security protocol. Essentially. You know, you just log into wherever you have that URL. You point it at our situation, and then you're done. And, and our and our team helps okay. you with that. They'll, they'll get it all dialed. It's it's pretty easy, depending yeah. on where your domain is. Pretty easy. Okay, awesome. Yeah. All right, thank you very much. Yeah. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Okay, next up is Laura H. And then I saw just before before you get going, um, Jay. You, you you normally you raise your hand, but I can just unmute you in a second, Jay. I see you there, so don't worry about it. Um, go ahead, Laura. Hey, thanks for doing this. Yeah, Pretty my pleasure. Oh, thanks. Morning. Morning. I love the idea of, well, first of all, I should say, this is my first Zoom, mm -hmm. watched videos, had an idea of pricing, when I don't want to put that much money out. I don't know if anybody's going to buy anything from me, mm -hmm. and I don't have that much money right now. Yeah. Um, so I loved when Jonathan was talking about the idea of getting validated, and mm -hmm. you've expanded on that a little bit more. I think that's a brilliant first move. Um, where do I? Where did Jonathan learn about all that? Is there? Is that in the demo or? Uh, where? Pretty sure, just consuming our content, and watching these, like okay. straight up. It's 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 really really easy. Um, I could run you through it in two seconds. Do are, are you an artist or, or or a painter? I mean, a photographer. Photographer. photographer? Do you, no. do you have samples of your media printed, ready to go? Yes. Okay. Do you have, where do you have the most fans or followers? Do you have some on Facebook, on personal Facebook page, Instagram page, or none of the above? Uh, it's, mo you know, there's some on Facebook, but it's actually my feed. I just got, I've been doing more and more with my Facebook page, mm -hmm. trying to build that, but it's more my feed right now. Great, done. Grab your phone, go live, hold up the media types, talk about them, say, guys, I'm contemplating launching my photograph, you know, my photography business. This is such and such piece. Talk about how you did it. Take the price that you paid for it, mark it up 250%, be willing to drop down a little bit. It's that simple. And just talk about your process and say, 
If you're interested, um, I normally sell something like this for 450 bucks, but I'm trying to launch my business. I'm willing to let it go for 250. Uh, you can leave me a comment, send me a text. Uh, you can email me, take PayPal or Venmo. Done. Go through, go through the cool, various I different times. That. Yeah, it's that, that. it's that simple. It, it's really hard to translate the power of an image over a camera, especially metal. I mean, I love how light plays with metal. How do you, how do you sell that? Do, it's amazing. Just... It's amazing. And I have, I have some really sophisticated equipment that helps me do this, which is, which is really expensive, but this is, this is how I do the zooms. Ooh. Look at the beauty of this image. Look at the texture. Look at how the light plays off of it. All I'm doing, this is a, hundred dollar webcam you know it's not even that it's a forty dollar webcam you just hold it up and you talk about it and you zoom in and you zoom out and you can say the metal's very very interesting you can see i've got some lights on well i can't see it well, there we go but that's it it's it, cool. it you're, you're yeah you're making it more difficult than you think it's it, it's super super easy to do and it's it's really just amazing right one everyone thinks they sell a 2d image and they can just post that on facebook or instagram you don't sell a 2d image you sell something like this that hangs on the wall the finished product this is what people are buying they're not buying a 2d image so have the 2d image talk about it and see if it'll sell that's it and that's what no one ever does and it's so simple right i always i always give the analogy which i think is it's it's critical to take them out of photography or art sales and, and go into the analogy land we're both cooks we both decided that this is the year that we're going to start a restaurant. Probably a terrible year to start a restaurant, COVID, but just track with me for a second. We, we decided we're both going to start a restaurant. I say, okay, I'm going to come up with a business plan. And I spent two weeks writing the business plan. Then I'm going to go down to the bank and get a loan. And I haggle down at the bank for a month and I get a loan. Then I go out and I look for retail spaces. And I try to find a space that I like. I got a good deal because it's COVID. I sign a two-year lease and then I go lease all the equipment. And then I hire uh, my staff and I design the menus and... I open it and people come in and I just learned a very valuable lesson. My cooking sucks and no one wants it, okay? That took me nine months to do. That took me a year and a half to do. You, on the other hand, are much more intelligent, okay? And better looking. You go to Costco, okay? And you get a little roller cart and it turns out your jam is tacos. And so what do you do? You cook up a whole batch of tacos. I'm not even on page two of my business plan yet. You've already got the roller cart. You cooked up a batch of tacos. You put it inside of the rolling cart, you rolled it right into an office building, and you put up the sign, Laura H's Taco Stand, open for business. Everyone smells it, they start coming down, they start buying your tacos, they're like, come back tomorrow. You go back five days that week, on day number five, the building manager goes, we actually have a little space at the bottom here, would you like to open up? These tacos are really good, right? Or if you're gonna go start the restaurant, you in two weekends found out what it took me nine months or a year and a half to figure out, right? Like you have to figure out you have a product that people actually want. So that's it. And guess what? If it didn't work for you on the tacos, the next week, you'd be out there with your burgers. If that didn't work, the next week, you'd be out there with your tortas. The next week, you know, you just, until you figure it out. That's the game. You were talking earlier about having things to do each day and that whole marketing mm -hmm. calendar thing. Mm -hmm. It seems to me that our, our culture is geared toward holidays. Does it make sense to kind of um, like target Halloween type images? Like, this month I'm doing spooky images and yeah, um, yeah, to a certain extent. I mean, I think you know the the best thing you can do is you start with demand and you work backwards, right? Like everybody, everybody gets pigeonholed, especially in the validation stage, with like, this is what I want to do and I love it, and you know I'm gonna I'm just gonna paint these flowers, okay? I'm just gonna paint these flowers. That's what I do. I love flowers, and 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 and, and they get bought in on it, right? Like they're like, no, that's what I'm gonna do. Is flowers. The smart person starts in the complete opposite direction. So where did that flower person start? They're like, you know what I love to do? I love to paint flowers. And so I'm gonna sell flowers come hell or high water and that's my decision. You know what the smart person does? They say, the flowers person does that and they're like, okay, now I need to go find an audience to buy the flowers. The smart person starts with an audience that is diehard crazy lunatics. Let me give you for instance. If you could create art that was themed around the Green Bay Packers, that is starting with an audience and working backwards. Turns out, Green Bay Packers fans, on some sort of unspoken rule, buy their body weight in Green Bay Packers swag every single solitary year. Why they do it, I don't know. But they are looking for more and more and more. The demand is insatiable. So you have a situation there where you're creating Green Bay Packer art. All of a sudden, you have hundreds of people that want it because these people are diehard. You're like, okay, I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go be the Green Bay Packer photographer or artist or whatever. 
You can do that for anything, right? But the, it's, it's the flip of your mindset that says, I'm gonna go start with demand and work backwards, okay? And that's a very, very hard thing to do. And there's, there's a ton of different stories, right, that, that illustrate this. I gave you one there. Everybody loves citing the Mark Cuban one. And Mark Cuban, uh, he made a bunch of money early in tech. He owns the Dallas Mavericks, big tech investor. Every time he gets pitched by something, his jam used to be, this is more relevant in the past because magazines are out of business, he would go down to the Barnes and Nobles or whatever the other borders or whatever your big bookstore is, and he'd go into the magazine aisle and he'd say, is there a magazine about this niche? How many magazines are there about this niche? If there were enough mm -hmm. magazines about the niche, he'd be like, this is a big niche, I'm gonna invest in this company. If there were none, he's gonna be like, sorry, I'm out. This is, this is never gonna go anywhere, I'm out. Mm -hmm. So you can think through the various different frameworks to figure out whether or not there is a demand for what you're doing, very few people do ahead of time. It's, it's a hard thing to do, right? But it's like, you wanna reverse engineer it. You wanna start with the demand and work backwards, right? Here, there's this trick, okay, let me see if I can do it with a USB stick and nail clippers. Let me see if I can pull it off. And it's a, it's a parlor trick with two wine corks. And you do it, let me see if I can remember how to do this. I used to be so good at it. What a Zoom, you're even doing magic tricks. <laughs> yeah, I, can, I can't remember how I used to do it. But you start, like, the, the, the point is, you start with the two corks out of the bottle, and the, top, uh, the tops of the corks are the part that was, like, in the wine bottle. And you're supposed to start with them both up and end with them both down. I, I can't remember how to do it. I'm not going to pitch it with it. But the way to solve the puzzle is to start how you're supposed to finish and then work backwards. Mm -hmm. Start how you're supposed to finish and then work backwards, and no one ever does that. But that's an interesting way to think about niches, I would say. Right. And then that also pushes the artist to really be honest about their product. Is yeah. there a market out there yes. or not? Yes. Am I a hobbyist or am I, do I really have something that um, others might want to buy? Yes. And it is without question, the single solitary and most question, most important question anyone can ask. And you know, the, the danger, the danger, right, is not answering that not getting that question answered by the only person that can which is the market right and working for years and years on your marketing when the market has told you they clearly don't want this so you're mm -hmm. just spinning your wheels and wasting your time until you have that validation step sorted and money all of it all of the above cool very very thought provoking i'm glad i glad i had an opening in my day and yeah i'm glad, I'm glad you did too and i'm trying to practice my my wine trick down below i cannot believe i forgot how to do it <laughs> Uh, you know, let us know when you oh, yeah. do. Yeah, and that's all I had. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Larry. All right, Jeff, you've got another question. Go ahead. Well, actually, Jeff, hold on. I said I would get, and then I'll come back to you, Jeff. Hold on. Where is he? Jay. All right, Jay, I'm going to grab you. Hold on. Because your hand's not up. i got to search you the old-fashioned way. Oh, I think Jay's gone. Is he gone? Let's see. Yeah, he's gone. All right, Jeffrey, you're up. Go ahead, Jeff. Um, just kind of an idea of what I what I... If people want to have like a good frame and to do exactly like you were saying, mm -hmm. hold it up. Mm -hmm. I went to Sabres down the street mm -hmm. and bought something like this for twenty bucks. Okay. You know, mm -hmm. that'll fit as a as a sales presentation. Yep. What do you think? See, I think Helpful. Step one, yeah, step one, you've done it, which is awesome. Step two, I've done it a lot more than you. Notice the size of yours versus the size of yeah. mine. A little bit right. easier to, to navigate this baby in and out, which is not to say I didn't have to learn my lesson the hard way, right? I still have my giant ones over here. The, the, right. the, the small ones in terms of selling on video are key. And by the way, the best thing about it is these things are so inexpensive that it's just like, ooh, you know? Like you can right. talk about your process, right? Like this is Positano, Italy. It's really one of the most beautiful places in the entire Amalfi Coast. Here's a fun fact that I didn't know when I was there. All of these houses can never change the color that they are painted. The city, right. the city, the town council mandates that they never change the color. This is the church. I know somebody that got married there, right? And you, you know, you talk about your process. You romance the image. You talk about why it's awesome. And then, by the way, one of my favorite things about metal is one, it pops off the wall. Two, uh, my kids have been hard at this thing and it hasn't even scratched yet. Very easy to clean, okay? Hangs automatically, comes with little felt so it sits cleanly on the wall. And it's like, okay, I wasn't even selling anything there, was I? Just talking about things, right? It makes it very easy to just talk about it. And then you can do that. And, you know, alternatively, it gives you the ability to articulate 
what your various different products are. And you know, the, 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 but to your point with the frame, not a bad idea. But you know, buying, s selling frames is, 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 a, is, a is a tough road to hoe for sure. I just meant like doing what you're saying, uh, put yours, I would put my- You're working there, yeah. The frame, yeah, yeah. And then just how things are framed actually sells well too. For sure. Um, Using Instagram as a tool to find out what people like and how much and how often, I mean, I, is, that a, is that a good idea? Ish, right? Ish. And the reason I say ish, I-S-H, for the uninitiated, is there is no button on the ATM machine for Instagram likes, follows, fans, Facebook likes. None of that exists, right? There, it could be all vanity metrics. Now, Instagram is an insane search engine, incredible visual search engine, and I use it certainly in my own practice as a data point, but not a conclusive be-all, end-all data point, right? Right. Yeah. Okay. But it can be helpful. Well, yeah. Um, yeah. Especially if, if I follow pretty much strictly artistic you know, galleries and things like that. Yeah, yeah. And that, that'll help narrow down exactly who's looking at it. Yeah, it, will, it it can certainly help, but just don't 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 let it be your only data point. Okay. Yeah. So that's it. Yeah. All right. I think that covers the questions, which is great, and hopefully, tomorrow goes through whoever wins, and we can all get back to normal, which would be great. Because let me tell you, marketing land is hard out there when the attention is just sucked out of the ecosystem to here, there, and everywhere. So, thank you guys for spending uh, the time Monday with me. Um, if you haven't validated, get going on validating. If you do feel like you're validated, uh, encourage you to request a demo, talk to our outreach team, see whether or not it's a good fit. Otherwise, three times a week on these guys, you can pop on anytime, as Mary knows. It's good, good. You're probably already at number 10, Mary is. Um, but otherwise, definitely, you know, and April's putting the links in the chat, and we'll send you a bunch of stuff afterwards, too, or, or all the links that we talked about today. But definitely subscribe to that show on YouTube. I'm telling you, it's good. Um, you'll, learn, you'll learn a ton of stuff. And I answer questions live on there sometimes too. So thank you guys all uh, for coming. Have a, have a great rest of your day. And uh, hope, to, hope to see you again soon. Bye, guys.